Well, good day, folks. Today we're chatting to Lee McDermott. He's a former Olympic gymnast with Great Britain, coach of the New Zealand gymnastics team in the past, was a coach of Circus Soleil back in the day as well, and now he's involved with the Gold Coast Suns. So a very interesting man. Uh, before we chat to Lee, though, just a shout out to our local, the Holdy, the Hold Fast Hotel. Yes, yeah, so good day to Jeff and the Holdy Hotel. Um, hope you're all going down, going well down there. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I got myself a snitty on a Friday night, and they've got a great deal happening. Said, so, listen to this: two snitties, a six pack of beers, and ten dollars um, in terms of the way of a voucher for when the Holdy opens up again, all for just forty dollars at the Holdy Hotel. How good is that? Mate? <laughs> uh, that's too good. <laughs> that's too good. Yeah. yeah. Is that where we're going now or what? Absolutely, yeah. mate. It's on a Friday night, unfortunately. But, uh, but <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, Friday night. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's a ripper. So, um, yeah, Jeff, all, all the very best. Um, we can't wait till you guys open up again and uh, keep up the great work. <laughs> Welcome to Legends with Bevo. Thanks to the Holdy, Coopers, Anytime Fitness Glenelg, and Paradise Mazda. And now, here's your host, Bevo. Lee McDermott, great to have you on Legends with Bevo, mate. So, um, Obviously, you've had one heck of a journey, as I mentioned at the start of the video. Talk to us through your journey so far and sort of how you, I guess, uh, your pathway into becoming an Olympian uh, with Great Britain. Uh, kind of started when I was 10. Uh, Dad took me out of soccer and because um, I had too much energy and literally started doing flips and stuff uh, in the gym and uh, one of the coaches grabbed me and uh, I, I loved it from there, to be honest, and training around... 25, 30 hours a week. Uh, took my school exams in Belgium and as I, as I was traveling and doing things. And um, yeah, ended up a British champion twice, uh, Olympian, and then Commonwealth Games, double gold, double bronze medalist. Yeah, amazing stuff. Congratulations on that. And then I'll talk about the, the coaching a bit further on down the track, but um, how have you been going with COVID-19 and uh, you mentioned the, off there before you've been doing a bit of painting, man, a bit of DIY. Oh, well, a lot of people are doing, doing the same kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of people were doing some home renos and, and painting and stuff while, while COVID's happening. Uh, to, to be honest, I'm, I've been on the job keepers uh, with, with my company since, uh, since we had to close all indoor sport. So um, my head coach has been doing some video sessions with, with the kids, doing the, like, the Zoom, Zoom stuff. Uh, when the restrictions started to lift, we had some one-on-one -on -one type sessions with some some kids to try and keep them fit and healthy. And um, like I said, just doing a lot of uh, painting around the house. And I'm going to talk a little bit further down the track about your stuff you're doing with the Gold Coast Suns. But have you been um, having a few Zoom meetings with the players from that as well? Uh, no, they've uh, just before we all kind of uh, stopped. I was coaching them as, as big groups and then doing some kind of return to play type stuff with a, with a couple of players. Uh, but then literally everything just happened overnight, uh, as we all know, and um, was, wasn't allowed to have any like contact or anything, which is the same as every, every sport, to be honest. And what's your passion for, for gymnastics like? Because we, I'm still doing, I really enjoyed doing a bit of research last night and seeing that your kids are now following in your in their father's footsteps as well. But where does the passion come from? What do you enjoy most about it? I guess um, as a competitor now and as a coach? As a competitor, um, it was addictive. It was a highly, highly addictive sport. And what I loved about it is if I had a bad day, it's all on my shoulders. But if I did well, it's all down to me. And it's my, my work with, with my coach, obviously. Um, so I enjoyed... Uh, the almost selfish uh, attitude of it, it's it's all about me, <laughs> so um, and that, and I take the good with the bad. So that 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 really drove me as a as a competitor, as a as a coach. I got into it because I really believe that uh, every kid deserved an opportunity to to thrive uh, to whatever level that they wanted to get to. And I just love seeing the kids' faces of when they when they've achieved something that they actually thought that they couldn't couldn't do. Uh, and then obviously the byproduct of that is if you produce a, a great athlete, then th that was that was also in in there as well. So uh, I coached the New Zealand team in 2002 and 2006 at Commonwealth Games, 
where we got the highest ranking of, uh, when I was in New Zealand, the highest ranking of fourth as a team. And just to see, see those kids' faces and what, what that does and changes kids' lives um, was, was massive for me. Moving on from there, uh, I, I decided that I also then want to mentor coaches. And the knowledge, uh, trying to pick, bring up the knowledge base in Australia here to to a high level and work with and collaborate with some of the other coaches that are around as well really interests me. Yeah that's wonderful mate and, and well done obviously uh, you mentioned before about New Zealand being taken into their highest position ever in fourth in the Commonwealth Games is just an incredible achievement one you must be very proud of. Yeah, uh, it's, and again, it's uh, it's part of my my journey that I've that I've taken. So um, yeah, I'm proud of that for sure. And you must have a a wife and kids that are very understanding because you start <laughs> off in Great Britain, then you moved to New Zealand, then you spent some time in Japan, and now you're in Australia. <laughs> you obviously got three yeah. around the world. But, uh, my my son was born in Japan. My daughter was born in New Zealand. We're both English. Uh, my wife is very understanding. And she just not long ago, actually, she turned around and went, you know, at least we at least we got something to talk about every time we go somewhere or down the pub or to meet people or whatever. We, we at least we got something interesting, um, and we feel that we've at least lived and, and enjoyed what we've done. Absolutely, well, we've certainly certainly done that. That's for sure. And in terms of living in Japan, uh, what was that experience like, mate? What were you doing over there? Uh, so, uh, Cirque du Soleil started to have its first, um, uh, resident show, like static show outside of Las Vegas or outside of America. And, uh, the show was then put right in the Disneyland. So, uh, I, I worked on the creation of Zed, which was the show then and started doing the creation, went to Japan, lived there for four years. And then we were there during the earthquake and tsunami. So um, that happened. Everyone got evacuated. Um, my wife and kids came back to New Zealand. I went to Macau for two weeks, went back to Japan and tried to reopen the show after. And we had to change a lot of processes, protocols and everything with, with the amount of earthquakes that they'd had. And unfortunately, um, it started to come back, but then the tourists just didn't didn't come and the, the foot traffic just wasn't big enough. That must have been really enjoyable though, being a part of Cirque du Soleil and, and you know, touring around some of the stuff that those guys there was just, oh, I just, I can't believe it personally, some of the scared of heights. It's just phenomenal what those guys do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's a very fun and interesting job. I, I never thought that I would be capable of doing some of that stuff. But um, once you're around a lot of creative people, a lot of people with a lot of energy, you become the energy as well. And it was my job to always keep everybody uh, up and running and uh, excited to do their job. And uh, to be honest, it's just like any, any job. You've got, you've got to engage your, your athletes and uh, keep them motivated. And as well, um... It must have been a huge thrill to, to be competing for your country in Great Britain. And you mentioned before that you won the, the gold medals and the bronze medals at the Commonwealth Games. And talk to us through that achievement, I guess, and also just what it must have been like representing your country in the world's biggest event. Um, it's a long time ago now, so uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to think back. Um, I, I have to say, like, I'm, I'm very stubborn. I like to win. Uh, I like, um, and my goal from when I was 10 years old was always to compete at the Olympics. I remember the, my coach lining us all up and asking every one of us what are our goals and aspirations when I was 10 years old. And some of them said club champion. Some of them said, I just want to be here to have fun. Some said, I want to represent Great Britain. And then he got to me and I said, I'm going to Olympic Games. I'm winning Commonwealth medals. And, and he went, cool, I'd love to work with you. So, um, <laughs> and, and that, that was at 10 years old. I, I think I must must have been a little arrogant so and so when I was ten, um, <laughs> but um, you know, um, uh, like I said, I just enjoyed I enjoyed the training. I enjoyed the the feeling of fatigue and that I've worked hard and that and also um, 
dealing with failure as well and, and knowing how to, how to have strategies to get over that when you have a bad competition and what you need to do to get over it. And obviously, um, yeah, ended up for Commonwealth Games and Olympics and stuff. And that's a big, big enjoyment and uh, very exciting at, at the time. And you had a, a, a terrible setback in, in that you did your ACL. So obviously, you know, going forward, yeah. that's in the history now because you've become an incredible coach and done amazing things there. But what happened uh, in that situation? And, you know, what was it like knowing that you'd, you'd done your ACL and that was sort of the career over with being a professional athlete? Yeah, um, that was that was a, a big injury, my, my first ACL. I've, I've had three total. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and um, I, was, I was in Spain and it was just over 40 degrees in the gym and I was probably dehydrated and I hadn't drunk enough and I was doing the vault and as I hit the top of the vault I kind of blacked out a little bit and I landed on my side and snapped my snapped my ACL uh, I I um, it was a partial tear and then I tried to get I tried to come back and the knee just was not good so I decided to have surgery go through the the usual process of um rehab uh through through that and yeah commonwealth games wasn't too far beyond beyond that actual acl and uh i managed to come back and win the win the trials um only about five or six months later which i know i should have taken longer uh but i won the trials and then managed to go to com games in 98 and acl still wasn't the greatest at the time uh, if you if you watch any of the videos when at Com Games, you can see I do very basic dismounts uh, off the apparatus because ACL was uh, still having trouble with my ACL. And then you so you said you know, the, the third time, and that was sort of when you decided that you know it was a career over. You're going to move on to the coaching. Um, that must have been pretty heartbreaking though for you. Uh, I I guess it, I guess I'm like many other athletes that that come to the end of their career, they, they struggle when they have to, to finish and to make that decision to, to finish. And I, I definitely think that there's um, a, a depression or a de depressive part of, of that once you finish, finish sport and going, your, your sense of identity is gone or, or lost or, or whatever. And what am I and who am I and what, what, what do I contribute? To, to society and to myself and I've actually got to go and get a proper job um so yeah it was it was a was a struggle time for sure and now you're involved with the Gold Coast Suns uh, certainly a team that on the rise um, you know got some very exciting players and I think I'm um, giving it a couple more years and I reckon they'll be uh, so they'll be certainly uh, scaring a few more teams in the AFL but what's your involvement there and uh, how are you enjoying that so far? But um, I managed to get hold of a guy through, on LinkedIn uh, that was the uh, high performance manager there. And we, I literally said, do you want to come for a coffee? And we, we started having a chat and he's like, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind uh, the guys doing a little bit of like uh, aerial, aerial awareness, uh, mobility work, multifunctional movement. He said, but there's nobody here that can kind of do that stuff. And I said, well, that, that's actually my passion of what I'd, I'd love to, to work on. Uh, so he kind of did a, a, a trial, a couple of sessions and then literally just took off and I was doing twice a week with them. And literally there's, there's a lot of work being done on the plyometrics and the jump, but not much work done on the, on the falling and landing, uh, landing awkwardly, uh, having the 360 degree spatial awareness where in the air, once, once you're on your descent down to the floor. So um, I was working for about a month or so, and then the, the high performance guy came along and he went, Lee, to be honest, I thought you were just going to do a few flips and stuff with them and it would be a bit of fun. But after watching this, this is awesome. And he said, this is something that I, I think every club or, every, every, or many sports should, should uh, grab hold of, um, which kind of gave me a boost as well. Uh, and I, I was just really happy that they were really enjoying the sessions that the athletes were really engaged um teaching them some technical stuff about landing falling where you spot where you look uh, when you're falling and um and yeah it's 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 been it's been a lot a lot of fun i i have to say 
I can just imagine, and uh, certainly the most unco person ever who can't even do a forward flip. I've got a lot of respect for you and uh, <laughs> most <constant laughs> <flipper. laughs> Hey, uh, what's your involvement with, um, with Stu McCulley? Uh, shout out to Stu, who you know recommended you and said how much yeah. of a bloke you were. Um, Stu from Next Level Lee, who I chatted to recently, mentioned to get in touch with you. Lee, um, what's your involvement with Stu? Uh, so a, a little bit again, uh, I've, I've been connecting a lot of people on LinkedIn recently, uh, not, not recently, the last 18 months, to be honest, while I've been trying to build my spatial awareness type of type of training. And um, he got hold of me and we had this kind of, we had a Zoom chat and he was like, Lee, just tell me about yourself. This is really interesting. What, what you've done, what, where, you, where you've been, where you're going to and, and things. And we just got chatting and we hit it off. And um, yeah. It was it was a really fun like hour conversation with him, and yeah, it was it was lovely to chat to him. Yeah, he's a wonderful fellow doing great things at that place, like as you are yourself as well. And your kids are involved with the gymnastics. You, you mentioned as well a little bit up there before that um, you know they're potentially uh, going to be stars of the future. How are they going? Uh, uh, my daughter, my daughter's actually had to finish up with her sport, so uh, so she's actually doing athletics and a bit of AFL now. Um, she just had she'd had surgery on her elbow the uh, end of last year. My son, uh, who's just actually doing his homeschooling at the moment, he's he's doing really well. He's he's a very natural, talented athlete. Uh, very good at baseball, uh, and also enjoys his gymnastics as well. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Wish them well, and hopefully they can uh, take up their dad in the future in whatever sport they choose to do. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, let me down. Thanks so much for joining us on Legends Legends of Bebo today, mate. It's been a pleasure having a chat to you and uh, well done on your incredible career so far. It's been, yeah, one heck of a ride and amazing to see all the different things you've done and, and the different countries you've been. So um, a credit to you and, and your family for um, following through with that. We wish you all the best in the future. Keep up the good work. Cool. I really appreciate it, Bebo. Thanks so much, mate.